speaking of the pumpkins and their back catalog and stuff for you to listen to, because you were saying you're a giant fan, um, like your favorite song of ours is The Shortest Year. Definitely. Oh, th- such a such a gem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so cool. Hey, that's, that's, yes, that's really nice. <laughs> oh, cool. cool. Um, well, that one, so like, basically, when we write songs, it's half, you know, I think like, and Mary can definitely talk about this too, but it's like bits and pieces of our lives that we sort of come together and discuss. And then the other half of it though tends to be like whatever we were listening to or kind of like syncing in at the time. And like that song is half, I like let Mary talk about, it's like half it's about the Pixies. So I'll let Mary cover that one. And then the hook though for that chorus totally came from, I was basically listening back to, so I'm guessing you're not familiar with the Smashing Pumpkins B-Sides collection off Siamese Dream. The album is called Pisces Iscariot. That's, I adore that, but sadly I'm not familiar. I love All that right. idea though. Yeah. Okay. So there's a song on there called Hello Kitty Cat. And I've always loved, I've loved it since I was like 12. So now this is what, 20, you know, 20 odd years later in my life. And I was like revisiting that album, listening to it while I cleaned my room and came across this giant plastic flower. Cause my little sister who's five years younger than me. So she was like 25 and she had flown to New Zealand and lived with Mary and I in the flat where we were living for a year. I, and I picked it up and I was like cleaning and I was thinking of like cleaning up the bits that were still like left of like leaving of her, like leaving New Zealand and against while listening to hello kitty cat just went, I'm still thinking about those flowers that you wear. You said it was your little sister. Yeah, so that's about that's about my little sister. I'm like, they made she worked at a Mexican restaurant and they made these like them put these giant ass huge plastic flowers like in their hair. <laughs> and they looked so beautiful. Like. <laughs> oh. Um, so yeah, like that line, but it's funny cuz when you listen to Hello Kitty Cat, like that song is fucking fast, like um, but we kind of ended up slowing it down and and then yeah, it was kind of that combined with but the keys and stuff I think really came from the Pixies. So I'll let you maybe cover that side of it, Mare. Yeah, well, because we were really, um, we were covering, when we first started, we started just trying to uh, cover a few songs and play, and like actually play in bars um, at open mic nights, just to kind of get our courage up. And so Indie Cindy was a song that we covered. And, and I guess we just got really familiar with those chords and yeah, used used similar chords and and in that song. Is that what you meant, Hannah? Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, we just got so familiar. So, Indie Cindy's in um, B G sharp minor. The Pixies apparently are big fans of that scale. Or E E is only like one note off, which I can't remember. But like, um, where is my mind? Is is written in E. That my friend loves that song. Uh, we were slacklining. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 melody is kind of like a do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, that slack line kind of lyrics. With your feet in the air and your head on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Try this trick and spin it. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so E, e and B. Um, we were playing covering Indie Cindy. We played it on the piano a lot to kind of learn my way back around the piano because I'd had like a year or two of lessons as a kid, and that was about it. Yeah. And like a really easy way on piano now is to just look up songs on YouTube, except no one likes new Pixie songs, like enough to fucking show you how to play them on a piano on YouTube. So, um, <laughs> so I had to learn and I had to learn all these inversions and it took me so goddamn long because I'm not an intuitive <laughs> piano player. Not only were those, was that key now buried, immersed in my brain and was the basis, I think. <laughs> Let's see those songs, but I want to do a YouTube video to piano tutorial indie Cindy to people. It's like my gift back to YouTube. That would you yeah. should definitely do that. I'd 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 watch a live stream of that. that sounds fun. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh well. I mean, I've got time now. I could actually. <laughs> I could probably do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have a few pre-typed questions, and I apologize. I probably should have done this earlier but uh would you like to introduce yourselves just to the audience whoever's listening to this however much time in the future uh, i'm i'm mary 
Train Gaddis, I think is my name now. And um, oh, no, um you're, you're Mary Train, right? Oh, that's right. Okay, I'm just Mary Train. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> Ma- the married name is is not. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, um, and I uh, live in New Zealand from Philadelphia, and I'm part of PGX. So. Um, and as an aside, just to boost that, uh, I love the color of before I introduced myself. Um, Mary and I were paddling around in Waltham Pool like two weeks ago on the day after we like released our EP, our cassette. And But Brian hadn't actually printed the covers for them. And I was trying to think if there's any questions for Mary, like about the liner notes, about things to put on them. And I was like, oh, you know, she got married two years ago. Do you want your married name or do you want, you know, do you want to be Mary Train still? She's like, I use my married name at PTA meetings, but when I'm drunk at two in the morning, I'm Mary Train. (laughs) (laughs) Your (laughs) Your given name was just Train? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. My last name's Train, like Choo Choo. <laughs> Mary Train sounds like I don't know a famous <laughs> adventurer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. <laughs> sounds like a powerhouse to me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I picture somebody who like hijacks entire trains before the conductor even realizes it. <laughs> With, Something like, a crazy. Smile like that. on their face as well. Yeah, a cigarette hanging out. <laughs> Blowing stylized smoke into the wind as the train whooshes down towards unknown it's kinda like It's kind of like Typhoid Mary. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Bloody Mary, Typhoid Mary. Yeah. There's lots of uh, Mary Magdalene. Lots of... <laughs> Mary's controversial. So many good Marys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then it's also like everyone's Nana's first name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quite contrary. We've got some nursery <laughs> rhymes. Oh, right, Hannah, Hannah, your turn. All right, yeah. My name's Hannah Hershenbach, and I'm in PGX. <laughs> Hannah Hershenbach. <laughs> and you're from Illinois? From Libertyville, Illinois. Uh, and now I live in the South Island of New Zealand. You, you're all flatmates in New Zealand? Yeah, we used to be. We used to, used be, to yeah. be. That's how that's how we met. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that's how Mary walked in my life. <laughs> that's so yeah. friggin' awesome. Would you recommend being a flatmate band like to other music lovers of the world? Do you oh, think there's a lot absolutely. of <laughs> I'm sure there's all kinds of creative benefit. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. Well well I didn't even I play like... the, guitar, the guitar until I moved into a flat in the flat in New Zealand. Basically there's something about like the water in New Zealand but everyone here plays an instrument. And so I moved into this flat and everyone played an instrument besides me. And at that point in my life I'd always had all these like boyfriends that played guitar and it was something I admired about them and and I was like wait a minute I can do this too. Like just because I didn't do it when I was 13 doesn't mean I can't do it now. Yeah. And so started learning the guitar and and that and the, you know and then Han and I made Hannah teach me because she she secretly knew how to play the guitar um but but was kind of taking a break from it and, and so but then and then but then we just started playing fun songs late at night and it was great <laughs> yeah like um I would say because so related also to the Smashing Pumpkins, I had guitar, way more guitar lessons than piano. I started playing guitar when I was 12, only because I wanted to be just like Billy Corgan. <laughs> and, um, but then went to college, kind of, you know, got more academic, never really hung out with any people in, that were forming rock bands or anything. And then so basically carried my electric guitar around from the age of like 17 to 30, and it was always with me, but I'd never, I like never really had anyone to play with. And then got into my research and started becoming interested in rock musicians, but still was so intimidated. I didn't identify with them at all. I thought they were, had crossed some magical songwriting threshold that I just couldn't see or understand. And then, um, and then yeah, Mary started learning how to play guitar. And I used to say, oh, I used to play guitar, you know, hmm. but a long time ago like <laughs> yeah you were like 30 years old you know like so he's yeah, still yeah. so young yeah i'm like i'm like <laughs> i 
I was never back in my youth. <laughs> yeah, back in my youth. And I was never good, you know, I could never write songs. And then actually there was, you know, Mary had been living with us about a year, so we were pretty close by then. And it was only after watching Mary struggle with a G chord for what seemed like 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm not very good at the guitar. <laughs> No one's good at the G chord at the start. You have to use like all four fingers. That's true. That's true. But I love the G chord now. It's a great one. Yeah. You just had to wrap your head around it. But basically, I knew I could play a G chord and you couldn't. And I sat there with the narrative in my head going like, I don't play guitar. I can't play guitar. And so watching you struggle with that long enough, it was actually like, I I, I can show you how to do that. Like, fucking pass it over. <laughs> like. I'll help. You're watching like a puppy dog drown and you're like, all right, all right, all right, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn it, just stop playing. Just just stop playing whatever you horrible thing you're playing. And was it we were trying to learn was I I don't know what, maybe it's a different memory, but was that when we were sort of trying to learn um the Rose song? Um if we yes. rose has a thorn? <laughs> like that one do you like poison? <laughs> Mm. Poison? That's such a great song. Hey, rose has it. <laughs> yeah, we, we covered that one. We covered yeah. that one too a few times. That's so cool. It sounds like it was a very organically formed band. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think, like, well, the cool thing was as well, like, um, you know, I could talk about Mary forever, and I often do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Like, links, links that started forming between, like, the guys I was researching, you know, who were mostly men in their, like, 40s and 50s. And, you know, like, I was giving one a, ri a ride up to Christchurch and just said, oh, I've I've kind of got a band with my best friend, but, you know, oh, we don't, we don't play. You know, it's just for fun. Like, we're not really making anything of it. It's just fun. We don't do much. And he goes oh, well, you know, that's all you really need. If you're having a lot of fun with your friends, that's when real magic can happen. Hell yeah. Well, Absolutely. Just yeah. No, I, I can't stress to you enough how, like, how quickly the naive EP got its hooks into me. Like, as soon as I started hearing it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna try to pursue finding out more about this band. <laughs> Fun. Um, I've I've been plagued by a, one of Hannah's newest song, newer songs. Every night when I go to bed, I just hear this like thumping, and it's it's wedding bells, Hannah. That, it's the wedding bells. I was like, oh, which one is it? Oh, yeah. and it's wedding. And it just it's like this this the bass line. I every night for the past like week, I'm like, what is this thumping in my head? I'm like, oh, it's wedding bells. <laughs> very very catchy. <laughs> like a rhythm that was stuck you'd hear it when you'd lay down sleep it was yes. just in your imagination okay i, I know i know that all too yeah, well it, yeah just like you know when when the rest of the world go, world goes silent what's left and it's like this this song of it that hannah's been working on for how long i mean six months hannah you've been you worked you wrote it about yeah. six months ago that wedding was in august so yeah oh. six eight months yeah mm -hmm. Um, yeah well it's funny and that rhythm is like so again it's a mix because like mary and i are kind of shameless pop music fans mm -hmm. riff yeah. is like so a lot of the flying nun bands i'm researching are very into kraut music or the idea of like don't be afraid to hang out on one note for like the majority of your verse you know or a minute or something interesting uh, yeah so like the chorus that everyone tends to like is um is something that came into my head like while listening to Bruno Mars at my cousin's wedding and just going like for fuck's sake like every wedding song is like so from the moment I met you you know you and me forever and I was like this narrative not only sucks it's kind of like unhealthy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's very unrealistic uh, those, those lyrics give, give me a song yeah. about fucking trying to trying to reach your toothbrush not having long enough arms coming asking your partner to see if they can reach it and then <laughs> snowballs give me a song about that uh, yeah reaching yeah. your toothbrush <laughs> <laughs> exactly something something of like yeah well 
see like that even that idea implies um you know collaboration <laughs> maybe like slow <laughs> yeah growth. you're right yeah. i might be onto something <laughs> yeah. yeah like all these things with these fucking awful pop songs about infatuation leading to marriage just never really touch on at all um so this is a tangent but anyway our wedding bell song is um about basically not want like thinking you're never gonna get married so like the chorus is just like <laughs> na 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 no wedding bells no wedding bells na 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 no wedding bells no wedding bells <laughs> thought i wanted it but what the hell was i thinking guess i lost myself no wedding bells Sounds yeah. <laughs> exciting. I'm I'm very pumped to hear to hear the uh, the mix. Cool. Or, well, we have to. <laughs> oh, um, what is the origin of the name PGX? Hannah, you want to take this one? Um, yeah. Okay, I can. Yeah, I'll take this one. So <laughs> basically, we it's really stuck because. We like that it's abstract and it kind of sounds like an it's we just started chanting it when a friend so it was first suggested to us by a friend. And like we had come up with all kinds of like coming up with a band name is so fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm trying to think of actually some of the ones that I have posited to marry <laughs> When we were going to play live that were just like, oh, one, the expats. Mary fucking hated that. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> the expats. <laughs> yeah. P-A-T-S. Mary's like, she's like as if the poster was like, hey, want to come see a local band? We're not from around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, also, so I've just been in like, so out. many... I've just been in so many like book clubs that are like the expat book club. And I'm like, it's not a cool, it's not cool. Like this is me with like my Nana friends, but, but no. <laughs> um, and then I, I was trying to zhuzh it up. My dog's name is Jarvis. Jarvis is on the cover of the EP. Oh, um, yeah. So I was like Jarvis and the expats. And Mary's like, that's a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I would agree. That is a little better. <laughs> Still wasn't salt though. <laughs> but actually, yeah, so so PGX though came from so we were like way off base. At one point, I was getting desperate. You know, I was like walking up the stairs, and I'm like, I don't know, cake for breakfast. And Mary's like, it's kind of fun. I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> um, it's so hard. Um, and then. A friend uh, who was in Auckland who does have a band and Mary and I have been playing together a couple of years, but like, and had written, you know, bits and pieces of about 300 songs and like never finished a single one. Mm. This is 2017. Uh, and then this, this friend of mine is like, oh, I'm going to come down and play in Christchurch with my band. Do you know any bands that could open for us? And I was like, oh, I'll have to have a think, you know? <laughs> And I was like walking my dog in the cemetery 10 minutes later and was like, wait a minute, I kind of have a fucking band. <laughs> like, <laughs> why don't we play? And she, she was a drummer and I had played to so the Peter Gutteridge song. Like I'd sort of come up with a chant and she had like set drums to it years before. Wow. And so I said, well, I've kind of got a band and maybe we could play, but we don't have a name yet. And she said, oh, that's cool. That's fine. I'll just put down PGX for now. <laughs> And then as soon as she we heard knew the it, Peter Gutterwood song. Yeah. And apparently that's like a Jimi Hendrix reference. Like Jimi Hendrix experience is. Uh, an X or I don't even actually J know. J -X. Yeah. I'm going to look it up now, actually. Oh, yeah. Pardon the clacking of my keys. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating I've hearing got, the evolution of cake for you know cake for breakfast to pgx because like i could totally see that name working for you know the vibe your songs put out oh really i i could see it working but i all i i love how abstract it is like you said it's it's incredibly catchy it, it looks good in a bold font it does next to a dog and I, 
<laughs> and we found that when we were on like a, a bill um, with like four other bands, all of the other bands, the text was so small to fit, but PGX yeah. was always really like three times as big. Oh, so we like, like massive. Like, yeah, well, like, we look so important you know, <laughs> yeah. on these on these bills. So great, this, this is great. <laughs> that that is so cool. I never even considered that, of course. <laughs> it, it's it's yeah, an no, odd I'll thing to it. consider. Yeah, no, that is like a huge tip. What, we were just on some. Um, like radio playlist and there was another band example i even like wrote it down because now that's like the best band hack ever oh there's this band so similar to jarvis and the expats right this band is nick nuisance and the delinquents they could be the biggest band in the universe you put that on anything and it's like the font is like size 0.8 font <laughs> yeah yeah it's got like 40 letters <laughs> But PGX needs to be big because if it was size 0.8, no one could see it. They'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> have no choice. Yeah, yeah. It's Relishing be us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, g- speaking of the Peter Gutteridge song, uh, and you, you do it a little bit in mopeds during the bridge, but the uh, I like this motif of the, the ultra enunciated. Oh yeah, <laughs> so it's almost like slam poetry, but not. I, I feel like such cliche saying that phrase out loud. It's just like slam poetry. I feel like so many, uh, people describe things that way, but uh, it, it is very like a cutthroat vo- vocal tangent you go on, and it's really very uh, I guess gripping. You'd say. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Well, I think primarily, you know, I identify as um, a writer more than a singer songwriter in every sense of the word. Like I was editing a magazine when Peter died. And so I had written an essay about him, which is basically that song, because I was at his memorial watching all his friends. You know, they had a stage and they have all these guitars lying around and, you know, he's got a billion musician friends. So they're like, oh, you know, anyone can just go up and jam and tribute to him. Oh. And like no fucking way was I going to do that. But a bunch of people did and I'm watching them play. And even one guy I had met there was like, oh, they need a singer. You know, like no one's on the mic, like still frozen. No way. But after he said that, the essay I wrote started to turn into a chance. Like I first heard his name and talk about Wellington. And so like I kind of pre-written that as just a story. And um and then I set it to lyrics and then later set myself the challenge of like writing melodies or doing something more simple and abstract and maybe like poetic that wasn't such straight narratives. And when we played open mics, people basically would listen politely to that shit. And then we'd end with Peter. Like we always end with Peter. <laughs> and then they actually like, rush, but like they rush the stage basically and are like, do that. That's yeah, yeah. badass. No, I, I could see <laughs> that fourth track really, really like riling some people up for sure. Thanks. There's actually a little clip I quite like live. Um, our drummer Jenny doesn't like it because she thinks she's out of time, but it's us doing it live like a couple weeks ago. And I'm just starting to finally master. Like there's no feedback on that track on the EP, but Peter was a really big fan of feedback. We just didn't really know how to do it yet. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm work. I'm working on it live. I'll send you the link afterwards, but like, Basically, it's just a new version of trying to kind of channel him. But Mary's not on that. Um, she's not playing on that show last month because Mary is um, <laughs> nine months pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you? So th- this is a naive as an old recording from at least nine months ago. Oh, not not well. well actually, it is actually. It um, is really but, not because. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, right. I, I kind of, I, I've sort of taken a step back from performing live, and, and yeah, but, oh, okay. but, but hoping, hoping to get all back into it, back in gear, and, and okay. not, not lose out. No, and I'm not, I'm not trying to pressure or push, but like <laughs> we had one, we had one gig with a, a new guitarist. <laughs> And the next day, I was like, Mary! <laughs> it just work. Like, Mary was in the audience, and I'm still, like, staring at Mary, just like I would as if she's on stage. Like, 
And I'm watching her face. Like, she's, like, looking happy and being supportive about the band. She's there to support us. But, and as the songs are getting kind of drowned out by the clashing of, like, instruments that don't really quite understand what they're doing, Mary's face just kind of looking a little bit, like, confused. Like, cross between <laughs> supportive and confused. Like, um, it was a shambles without her, basically. Like, she's magic. And it's not just our songwriting, you know, enjoyment together. It's also her totally unique guitar playing is just like <laughs> it's not a matter of a new guitar player like there's only one mary in the universe and Aww, thank you hannah that's very sweet very sweet <laughs> these are the kinds of stories i love hearing about uh, you know about fans again going back to archiving All right Pe- like discovering yeah. this 30 20 years from now like people are gonna think it's really fun i think <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that's the cool thing like i feel like i finally understand the thing that i couldn't about bands like through meeting mary but just that like you know you make an ep to document the enjoyment of spending time with someone and like that songwriting actually comes from being with someone that you kill so much time with and you actually also feel like you can totally let go like you could say any idea to them and nothing is dumb it's all just, but Mary is very, and I love, she's very, um, what's the word? Uh, cause I don't want to say div, that's not quite right. But anyway, but she's still supportive, but like she'll rank things. Say something, Mary go, I don't know if that's the strongest or like that doesn't grab me. So yeah, it's not that everything is like, that's the best ever. You know, there's, she, you're discerning, I would say. That's, Mary, but you're not critical. Yeah. That's really smart. That, that probably makes thinking a lot easier. I should do that. <laughs> You need a Mary in your life, basically. <laughs> Dear universe, please send me my own Mary. <laughs> I like yeah. paint. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so you all met what on a roommate website or something like that? Yeah, basically tra- trade me. So if you ever come move to New Zealand or anything, trade me is it's the New Zealand Craigslist, but it's but it's very it's just everything. It's the it's the lifeblood of of New Zealand to trade me, and so yeah, you Friends. find you find everything. You find your friends on Trade Me. You find your flatmates. Find the, Hannah Hannah found her dog on Trade Me. <laughs> you know your, your refrigerator, your your bicycle, everything you need in life is on Trade Me. My land was on Trade Me. Yep, yep. Us too. We found our our land on Trade Me. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hannah built a built a house, and I'm I'm working on building a house. I just designed a house. Yeah, oh, that's it's so cool. fun. <laughs> it's wow. it's fun, want- but it's it's sad when it all gets put on hold because of um, coronavirus. Yeah, and you, and you everybody loses their jobs. And that's just something that I never could dream I could do over here, like out in Illinois. Yeah. Let's see. Tell me some of your best stories of gigs. Sounds like you do a lot of open mics. I'm sure there's a lot of fun tales. Hmm. <laughs> we we sort of started with open mics, but we haven't done any 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 recently. Mary, uh, I can I tell the one? Um, can I talk about <laughs> Dunedin, like our first tour and just the oh, tuning yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do you want to tell or should I? <laughs> Oh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add in a little bit more about that trip after you finish. Oh okay. yes, go for it. Um, yeah, I'm like, can't I'm like, well, it's actually about it's kind of yeah. So this will be another Mary fan story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the interesting thing about playing live that you don't realize when you get started is that it's just like constant technical problem solving of like 320 things that you didn't even realize you had to think about before you started playing live. Um, so we're playing in Dunedin. We had our first show the day before. The Biscuits were traveling to Dunedin the next day. And we were like, oh, well, we can road trip to Dunedin. So all of a sudden, our first gig becomes our first tour. <laughs> so we were Because <laughs> we were, like, driving four hours down the road to play with them again. Awesome. <laughs> we're on tour. That's awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. Brought the dog. <laughs> no fucking road trip. And, and so we're hanging out. And, like, I was studying down in Dunedin. So... Uh, we're all like, staying at my flat there and we tune our guitars, you know, before the gig. And we didn't have a lot of, um, 
pedals or equipment yet, but Mary was organized enough that she had bought like a tuner that you actually plug in, you know, so like you have pedals and we're so new to this shit, you know, you can have a tuner and an amp. We mostly have tuners as apps on our phones at this point. Yeah. Um, but my, my guitar, Mary was- guitar teacher said, if you, if you're going to play live, you have to buy this. It's like $90, buy it. And that, so I was like, okay. Right. So. Ah, <laughs> and the it, teacher, yeah. So Mary's sorry, the only one. It's a pass through tuner. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So Mary has a pass through So you can actually, and you know, and the advantage of that as well is that like if the ban- if the room is noisy, you know, you can still tune is the big advantage because it's actually plugged in. Okay. So, so basically, because Mary's the only one that has it, we all would borrow it <laughs> and kind of like pass it around on the stage or whatever. And we had tuned our guitars at my house. So like, This story is now going on forever, basically. But we're at the gig. We take out our guitars, and we're ready to start playing. What I didn't realize, none of us realized, is that if you move your guitar from a place like a fucking freezing cold flat like I had and tune it there and then bring it to, like, a warm bar. Hot bar. Like, sweaty people. (laughs) Yeah. Like, the strings actually have now swollen or whatever, and it's out of tune again. (laughs) Like... So, so we, we, were, just, so happy. we thought we were ready. We we're ready for a song. And we all like take out our shit. And the tuner is like with Charlie or something on the other side of the stage. And I start playing the first chord and it sounds <laughs> awful. But like the drums are going and the bass is going. And I'm like, okay, like this train is starting. Like, <laughs> yeah. And we, and we were like not going to stop. You know, it's like we're going. We're going. And so like I'm like, you know, I'm just like, okay. I hope my guitar's not too loud. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I just start going. Mary also notices that her guitar is out of tune, but Mary has a different reaction. Mary <laughs> turns off her amp, unplugs her guitar, races across the stage, grabs her tuner from Charlie, <laughs> and tunes her guitar for like the next minute or two, and then and then turns herself back on, and luckily like drowns out my guitar. So basically, <laughs> like the, the story is, if something's going badly. I will bury my head in the sand and pretend nothing's happening. And Mary will sacrifice looking good to actually fix a problem and sound good. Awesome. But what's what's really funny is like I I did the same thing when I was like at like five years old and in ballet. I remember I like I left something on the walk side of the stage, and so before every like five like performance, I would run across the stage and get whatever I needed. And it was like the audience thought it was like a co- comedy, and they were like, "What is that? What is that small child doing?" And like I ne- and then I never went back to ballet after that because I was so embarrassed. <laughs> uh... I'm glad you kept playing with us. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's yeah. a great gig story. <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing I was going to add to that gig story was, um, so Hannah's Hannah's house that she was living in was like this old villa. And oh. I don't know if you know anything about Dunedin, but it's hardcore South Island, like cold as ice and with zero insulation, you know, you might as well be camping outside. But so, so, you know, we'd had this band, this, this fun band night and drinking and everything. And we're all sleeping in Hannah's room under like eight comforters. And I, I woke up in the middle of the night and like it touched my face and was like, what's, why am I all sticky? And it turned out that I had gotten a bloody nose from the cold. And I woke up in like this horror story, like pool of my own blood. Like, what's happening? Like, touring, I'm not building to tour this is too intense <laughs> this is, but but everything was fine and it, it, everything was fine it was just a bloody nose but it, but it, it felt really hardcore and like walker oh god <laughs> yeah that would scare the hell out of me <laughs> it was pretty bad and because it's cold <laughs> and it's like nose blood it was probably like coagulating and getting uh- like thick, it was I'm so sure. Sticky. Ugh. So sticky. So yeah, sticky. It was. It was definitely. Yeah. Very. Yeah. It was, it was a new one. It, it was yeah. a first. Another road trip story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, oh, here's another thing I should get on record. What is like the official lineup of the band? Who who's the the instruments? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I guess I'm I'm the guitar. And Hannah's the vocals and the bass. 
Hmm. Jenny's the drummer. And yeah. you want to. And so Charlie, like, so basically we've got. Um, it's interesting because, like you said, with the recording being older, well, when we recorded it, Charlie was Ray, which I don't think Charlie would mind me saying, was Rachel. Mm. And then a cu- couple months later was like, I identify as a boy. And so we're all super supportive. And But actually in the last two years, you know, basically Charlie's gotten busy turning into a boy and like other things in life. And we've actually just had this really nice reconnection, though, um, partially kind of with the lockdown and like recording songs for the next EP. Mm. And hopefully Charlie will come back. But so Charlie was actually the one playing bass. And Mary and I were both guitars and vocals on the first oh, that's EP. that's right. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now Charlie's going to come back. and But we've kind of like shifted instruments a little bit. Um, and Charlie actually wouldn't be so nice. He also was, um, cause he was doing, we never really made full utilization of his trombone. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. We always talked about it, but, but it didn't, didn't pan out. And Charlie's more interested in guitar now and more melodic stuff. So I'm hoping to get him back on the EP because speaking of the shortest year, again, your favorite song, like that one and chocolate factory. But so Charlie's the only one with any like musical Theory. I mean, we've had to talk about Mary and I, but yeah, musical theory. Like Charlie's mom is a music teacher, uh huh. And so he's kind of the one with knowledge of like harmonies, or you know, for that part in the shortest year where structure. yeah, the structure when there's a bridge and we start going like ooh, 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 ooh. Charlie's the one's like, okay, well you're gonna need to you know, oh, what if you you could do that twice and move it down a third. So like we're like, oh, what does that even mean? <laughs> he like shows us on the piano. We're like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, but to get up there, you're gonna have to like stagger it. So the fact that you know there's kind of a, a climb on the guitar before we start doing that, like these are all the things that like Charlie helps like realize or like any song that gets finished. I see. Other yeah. than Peter, which has like two whole chords and doesn't change at all, <laughs> like it's because Charlie actually kind of shaped it. So yeah interesting yeah it's been it has been interesting though i'm really i'm really hopeful about getting him getting him back did uh several of you work at a chocolate factory or is that just, <laughs> just, just hannah just hannah <laughs> yeah that was just me that was my first <laughs> in dunedin like 10 now 10 years ago um basically moved down there from the north island it's really interesting because so Dunedin is the place in New Zealand that has this kind of myth or this idea of there being like a lot of musicians there, a lot of rock musicians who make great music. And so I started hearing about this myth on the North Island and kind of got attracted to it and, you know, went on tour with a band. So that's kind of in the Peter story and I fell in love with it, moved down there and basically got a cold water bath of reality that like there are no jobs down here. I had to go to the unemployment office and after some shitty office jobs, turns out the chocolate factory had like an exclusive contract with the unemployment office Mm. (laughs) because the only requirement for working there is that they don't want, they want you to show up at 8 a.m. like every day for a year. That is the only requirement of the job. And um, (laughs) so anyway, they they need desperate people. So like they only hire people that are like on the unemployment benefit and that desperately need to show up. And uh, it was the greatest and the worst job I've ever had. And the one thing I got out of it, like didn't write a song or anything, but once was pulled off the factory floor to help in QA, which is short for quality assurance. Basically you test little pieces of chocolate to like make sure that everything's going as it should. Or like um, sometimes a metal detector will go off and you'll have to figure out what it was and sort of mark it and do charts and things. So it's the one place in the factory where there's actually a mix between people wearing the uniforms like I was and people in suits or like in the office side. Oh. That was one of the lessons or the greatest and worst is that, you know, a lot of people are polite, but actually it's like what you wear matters. And I remember once I was just taking a break and getting a coffee, like waiting to make a instant coffee. And the guy in front of me was wearing a suit and I was waiting to use shit after him. And he saw me and looked at me and assumed that I was like waiting there to serve him and like put the coffee away. And he like handed it to me like, oh, mm. thanks. You know, thanks for your help. That's the one line I got out of like a year working at the factory was like, thanks, but I'm not here to hold your coffee. Did you <laughs> give it back to him? Um, no, because I wanted to make a coffee. 
<laughs> so wait, did you just, a... did you just drink that one or, or like what what happened? <laughs> no, no, it was it was like the coffee jar basically, you know, like so it was like, uh... but yeah, so it's kind of like a weird story. But basically, my um, my snark about that, and I could I could tell that like I was being treated like a second class citizen, and yeah. that he like misunderstood why I was there, and I didn't say a word to him, but I like scrawled the lyric down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Mary discovered it in my notes like eight years later and was like what what's is this thanks but I'm not here to hold your coffee and I'm like yeah. I started telling her the story like, this is hilarious so we started writing Chocolate Factory yeah I mean that's a very visceral feeling yeah. that gets conveyed in that line I think but not not that the song feels visceral yeah <laughs> Yeah, my flatmate Winston, when he heard me ranting a bit more with the Chocolate Factory, he's like, I'm surprised that song isn't more bitter. <laughs> Shit, I was surprised you said it was both the best and worst job you ever had. Cause it it seems like such a lame environment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There were there were playful moments like, well, the coworkers that you had that were your age were like kind of the best part. Other people in the uniforms who are your age, because the only qualification of the job was that you were gonna show up and be able to use your hands and hold trays of chocolate. Once you're there, you know, you just have like the next eight hours to kill and like entertain yourself basically. Right. Um, so the people you were with, you know, if if you guys could have a good time together, then, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for play. So that was, those were the good moments. Uh, I, I hear that. My favorite job I ever got was uh, delivering sandwiches. And was, really? Yeah, I had a few friends from high school working there and it was the like it was the best ever i feel like i could take on any any task in that restaurant it didn't matter because your buddies were so cool to be with or yeah it's just uh like oh yeah i got the bathrooms guys don't worry about it yeah <laughs> that was like the cool. attitude i could take i was just like holy shit <laughs> this is yeah. like, this matters yeah, and I, you know that kind of enabling um, atmosphere of like relaxation or power to do anything that you just described, I think, is exactly the feeling that like Mary and I were trying to describe about needing the right people to start a band with. Or yeah, mm. would you say, Mary? Yeah, yeah, it could just chemistry or people that challenge you, make you want to want to experience something new. Mm. Yeah, and people that make you feel like I think powerful and relaxed at the same time, like that opportunity for play or like to feel kind of embodied or like everything's going to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I don't know what yeah. you're saying has me thinking. Uh, just music inherently should be a more casual endeavor than a lot of people try to do when they start a band. Definitely. Like, oh, that's so cool. Because I was wondering, you know, when you had said, you know, you talked about how relaxed they made you feel, like. Yeah, if you had ever had that feeling with certain friends, it's not about how good they are on instruments. It's about how they how they make you feel, and that's I think where a good band comes from. So, this is one question yeah. that I really want. Um, huh? Uh, I'll add. Well, actually, one thing. Yes. Well, I want to hear the question you're going to ask, but I'll throw <laughs> in. This is at least South Island related, but my research has shown me. Um, Dunedin is known for being prolific in terms of music making. What is actually going on is when people want to kick a band member out of a band and it's becoming difficult, they just change the band name. <laughs> and they go, oh, we're in a new band now. It's called this, and our singer is this. And anyway, long story short. <laughs> oh, like create a new project and then devote most time to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> a cold but cunning strategy. <laughs> yeah but uh um, but sorry what's the question that yeah you really wanted answered yeah, well yeah something i always try to ask when when doing this type of thing is what's something that you want on the record here some message that you'd want to send out like what what would you want a lot of people watching to know like take something away from your philosophy or this interview you guys have um... something out there well, I don't think it's like profound or anything, but but I guess I would just want people to um like it's never too late in life to learn an instrument and start a band. It's it's and it's a really fun thing to do. So if you are so intrigued, you know, get into it and don't yeah. don't worry about it. And I would say kind of similarly like something that I that seemed profound to me that my childhood guitar teacher actually said to me a couple years ago 
we've like reconnected and I still kind of pick his brain over Skype oh when I'm trying gosh. to finish. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, he's so cool. He said, no one's in rock bands in America anymore because being in a rock band is about teenagers having time to kill. Yeah. And, you know, he kind of thought the helicopter parent epidemic or people making themselves so busy, like that just American culture had no place for that kind of attitude. It's true. Oh, um, wow. now, I wonder now if like the tides have been changing a bit and maybe the message I would say is like, I'll pass on his, you know, being in a band is about having time to kill. And if you've got time to kill, it's just about, yeah, finding friends who relax you. I don't care if they can't play shit because it's about throwing ideas to each other, coming up with melodies in your head and just having fun and not being dicks, but pull a Mary. And if an idea isn't very good, just go, I don't know if that's a strong or that doesn't grab me. <laughs> and just keep, keep coming up with stuff and just have fun and let it be its own purpose. And then magic. And then you'll find things you love or something that grabs you and then it'll grab other people too. Hell yeah. And having a project, like any project, doesn't have to be a band, but any project between like you and a friend, it's it's awesome. It's an awesome way to ha have friendships in life, you know. If it's like an art project or you know whatever, it's it's something that's a common interest, but that has more to it. Yeah, some structure maybe. Yeah, like a goal. <laughs> like we're sounding American now though I'm like let's make some goals like Mary and I are I know, all I know yeah <laughs> we try to not have too many goals I know we're like let's waste oh, yeah. time and you know, we're like by making goals <laughs> I know like, let's get a goal list I'm like no <laughs> not the point I'm like are we being hypocrites of our own advice right now <laughs> <laughs> definitely I don't know uh, I feel like sometimes a goal or an idea can get sterilized if you only think of it as such. So I actually enjoy, I like that sentiment. Which one, the, the have a goal or the time, kill time making goals? <laughs> like it's just in general, the, you know, in other words, yes, exactly what you said. What we're, <laughs> we're tossing around ideas that are sort of half formed, but we all know, we all understand yeah. what we're talking about. I don't know what's going on here. The, pe yeah. the people listening to the recording will have the context. I don't know why I'm trying to like streamline the, yeah. the language. No, it's good. <laughs> you know, and I think as well, actually, um, to sort of build on that, you know, because well, one thing that in my research, so I've interviewed lots of New Zealand bands, and one thing that people constantly lament is when you lack goals or basically they're like oh so many bands go through the process they've written all these songs they've even recorded the songs but then they don't release the ep because they don't actually really care like they just it's about the process itself and the enjoyment so you actually kind of do need that little bit of a goal at the end to even give back to the community mm -hmm. if you believe in music or you believe in culture or you believe a little bit in what you're doing or you enjoy the music of other people you need that little bit of a push to release it and actually naive like we recorded those songs in may 2018 wow this was two years ago and releasing yeah. it like is is some more admin tasks and it's not all the fun enjoyment of like getting drunk on wine and like bouncing ideas around there's a little bit of technicality and writing a press release and like that took us a year but eventually <laughs> eventually we finished the tedious goals too and we get the enjoyment of talking to you or you actually connecting with our songs that's what it's all about so a mix of play and structure maybe is is the way forward. Mm. Like Mary was saying. Uh, what, what made you decide to put uh, Jarvis on the cover there? <laughs> it was Jarvis, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Jarvis, yeah. Nailed it. Um, He's just our mascot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, so related. I mean, he is our mascot, but like the thing about goals, like the EP cover was another one of those things that – it was just easy to overthink and we it was keeping us from releasing the ep because we're like oh well can you draw i can't draw what should it be a photo of us that's lame like <laughs> do we know any artists like it started to get tedious and then actually my flatmate brian who runs the label melted ice cream who i adore was like he just literally said it's best if you don't overthink it and we'd always mm -hmm. kind of joked about photos of jarvis of which we have a billion <laughs> yeah. um 
<laughs> and, and Hannah like, put Jarvis and, on the cover of, of the magazine that she was the editor of, yeah, and it was yeah. it was really popular. <laughs> oh my god! And so, yeah. so <laughs> it was yeah, winter edition, Game of Thrones, you know, kind of dire wolves. Oh, I got you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, like, it was kind of mildly themed. You know, I didn't just chuck him on the cover, although I did. But... <laughs> yes, yeah. you did. So he, he, was he had history. <laughs> there was history this between was the dog his and the first ideas. Cover, cover shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think you're going to use him in subsequent releases? Uh, um, well, probably. I, I even wanted to call the next EP I Miss My Dog, because he actually mm-hmm. died last year. Oh, and, I see. Yeah, so it's kind of a tribute. And my bandmates were like, well, he's Ginny. She's like, I think we kind of did the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I bet only Ginny could get away with saying it like yeah. that. He's our tastemaker. She's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good point, though. Yeah, but again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I try not to overthink the the name of the EP, you know. Yeah. But anywho, bang. yeah. So that Jarvis photo was literally from Brian going, "Don't overthink it." Actually, and that photo was one my friend Martin had took. He actually put Jarvis um, in a film. Well, he put me in a film, and Jarvis got a cameo, of course. <laughs> and um, and he took that photo on set. So we had. I, mean, I love that photo of Jarvis, and I was like, well. This is the best photo of him, probably. Everyone takes photos of Jarvis, and they tend to be bad, but Martin took a great one. And then Brian distressed the photo, and it went from our EP cover being, you know, an abstract idea that was holding off the release for a year because you could pick any idea in the world to, like, five minutes after Brian had said, don't overthink it. We had a distressed photo of Jarvis that Martin (laughs) took that was, like, on my phone, um, and we had an EP cover, so... That's how that yeah. happened. I mean, yeah, it really works. And the, the dots, um, yeah, it like depending on you know what kind of display you're looking at it in, or like whether it's you know squished onto a phone screen or if it's here on my laptop, the the dots yeah. sort of make a little pattern that's different depending on what size the image is, which is fun. Oh, nice. There's a I was actually researching this, but there's a in game design especially old games there's something called dithering where they do a checkerboard pattern to give the illusion on a crt screen that the console is displaying a color between the two and it's sort of some way to cheat oh wow right Uh it's just my brain firing off like oh and it's it's kind of like that (laughs) yeah yeah. cool Um, i actually i had a quick trot around my house to see if brian's here but i think he went on a run uh, um, I, I was gonna, I was gonna like have you talking about his cover because I thought he'd be quite flattered. But, like, um, for real, cover art is such a huge part of like my love of music. It's gotten to the point where most of my music tastes are, I, I decide based on the cover, and if it's something that lies outside my tastes, I either, I either learn to love it and it becomes part of my collection, or like I, I just, you know, I just forget about it. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, it's it's really it's a working system. But yeah, no cover it art is, is like, wonderful. I'm so grateful to Brian, yeah, that he's a part of our lives because he is he's such a force in Christchurch music. Has released so many things through being willing to be that guy that does do the yeah. admin, or sends out the release. And he's so talented, you know, because he's a graphic designer yeah. as well. Like he just recorded it as well. He recorded us, yeah. <laughs> recorded it he, he mixed it he did the you know, album art he just kind of can he's make it happen. got it all yeah make it happen sounds like i could get along with this guy <laughs> yeah, yeah he's awesome yeah. like legit no that's what i i want to do. i want to like find local bands here in illinois and be like hey do you have music but you don't like have the means to record it let's record an amateur ep let me draw oh. your cover <laughs> yeah oh man yeah. you should yeah. start a okay. label maybe i should yeah uh, that's exactly yeah. it that's the piece no and he'd be a great interview as well i wish he was around but um you could tee up one with him later because he's actually the next episode of my web series which i might be <laughs> shooting later today if i'm so motivated is going to be entirely about brian awesome Ooh, goody what is the web series called again I remember you shared a link. Oh, I don't fucking know. It doesn't really have one yet. Lockdown. <laughs> no. Lockdown 
peasy. Then we're back in our title problem. It took like fucking years to come up with PGX and we didn't even do it. You should mm. PGXL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about this is PGX? Yeah. Yeah. What is my web? Yeah. If anyone has any f- suggestions for some kind of title that doesn't reference COVID-19 or lockdown, I'm, I need one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's kind of something like, well, basically in terms of attitude, I just think part of being in a band is so much fun, like the monkeys. I mean, obviously you can't call it the monkeys and that's just the band name. So maybe it's just PGX actually. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Sorry, Hayden. I did. I, I kind of talked over you there. Were you going to say something? Oh no, no, no. I was, I was good. I, Oh, well, yeah, it's, we're coming up on an hour and six minutes. So who would, I'll start wrapping things up. Is there anything else uh, you'd like to share? And we can do another one of these in the future, however you feel about yeah. it. But I will watch your career with great interest regardless. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We are hoping to have another EP out, ha ha, in May. That's not going to happen anymore. But we're thinking, similar to your idea of thinking it'd be a fruitful time for music, yeah, like, we just have to write another couple songs and maybe it could be a debut album instead, so... If with Brian's help we manage to push that into fruition, yeah. Oh, what no, one more thing yeah. I wanted to ask was what was uh how'd you come up with the line that became a feminist, still oh. like my tits in a bra? That because that's just <laughs> it's so to the point and like clever. <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, I mean honestly, I think it is that just kind of came from a bit of like meditation, you know, songwriting is nice because when you write essays or other bits you can waffle on but a point that you might make in a paragraph actually can be distilled down to maybe seven words like in a song lyric um and that's the same thing like i was just kind of thinking about it and you know like i didn't identify with feminism for a long time because you identify it with like bra burners in the 60s and all this kind of extremo shit and i was like Well, I think the Victoria's Secret Angels are beautiful, and I love watching them, like, (laughs) but I do believe in equality, so that was kind of me reconciling those two things, you know, like, okay, I am a feminist, but, like, I'm still going to wear push-up bras as well, because, like, isn't this hot? I mean, and that's, I think, another key thing about being in a band is to be a little bit shameless about um, being downtrodden in any way, or, like, that's kind of thing with my web series, too, you know, that I'm, like, literally... We've been yeah. filming ourselves for years with the delusion that we were going to get good footage. And every time we look back and we're like, let's never show this to anybody. <laughs> like, we're still trying. Like with the lighting? And... <laughs> yeah. That's the, I'm, and... My degree is in film and that's the number one thing I, I learned or was humbled by was how much goes into lighting to make footage oh, right. look presentable. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. More yeah, in the very in the very beginning, <laughs> Hannah would want to record record like our sets and stuff, and I would just be like, Hannah, let's not let's one. not record it. I don't think we need to listen <laughs> back to this one. Let's just let's just let's just not worry about it for a little let while. Let it be forgotten in the sands of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sands of time. We don't we don't need to go back to this one. We're just we're just trying to get better. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God! Or like when we started, do you remember? Like our second, so our second show, or no, it was our first show. Our first show, we listened back to it, and Mary literally was like, <laughs> "I only really remember because I wrote it down." Mary's like, "Let's never show this to anyone." <laughs> <laughs> but are you trying to like turn it into a live EP or re- like recording? Well, no, so basically, there's this radio show guy in Christchurch who like clandestine sneaky like stealth records live music doesn't even ask the band and then like plays plays it on a radio show here that's what and, i started um, doing and but i always like i always ask the band. you always ask right yeah, yeah I think that's only fair <laughs> um so anyway he did record that show and he played like the worst fucking song like as he when he's like oh and i played something and i was listening I couldn't believe the song he picked. It was when Mary, we had a bit of like the mopeds riff, but we only had the riff. So we like inserted it into another song. Uh, oh, just I thought it was paper skin. To try it out. <clears throat> it would be, yeah, we put it in paper skin and like, basically it was so new that I blow the riff. Like I'm a semitone off. It sounds horrible <laughs> for the first two go arounds. And like the audience is <laughs> 
friends because like we're not musicians you know we're just people that got on stage so all our friends are like oh my god i'll be there it was like the biggest <laughs> event the decade and like basically the recording is like me like uh it's like walloping it's so bad and then walloping. the third time it sounds nice and the audience like roars with the applause <laughs> like you got it why yay <laughs> And then after the I song, I'm like, you're, you're very kind. And then the radio guy, so he like cuts it off there, and he's like, they were kind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so embarrassing. I could die. <laughs> that sucks. I mean, I used to buy Smashing Pumpkins bootlegs tapes from like the little, you know, they actually used to have stores for those kinds of things, like used CD stores. And then all of a sudden, when the internet dam broke, it was like, oh my God, yeah. you know, you can have every bootleg recording that the band has ever done in one place. Like, basically, it's never been a better time, I think, to be a bootleg recorder and share music with people around the world because it's just, I'm like, I'm old enough to remember what it was like before. And I'm still just like flabbergasted and overwhelmed and delighted at how many people you could share it with, you know, or the fact that Brian didn't have to spend tons of postage sending our cassettes all over the world. Like you got to listen to our music just by like a link, like how that's still like magical. And absolutely. Um, all right. The, well... <laughs> the I support your endeavors. I think you're doing amazing things. And any scene that has you in the back of a gig recording for the band is lucky to have you. I hope so. I hope to, I hope to be a, a positive influence in the scene. Awesome. The oh, flat. well, thanks, Hayden. And yeah, I look forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, likewise. Hannah, Mary, it was wonderful speaking with you. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, afternoon. What is it out there? Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yep. Yeah, enjoy your dinner. Talk yeah, to you later. Peace out. Keep in touch. Yeah, sounds See good. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>